Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to talk about elasticity. What's meant by elasticity? Let's assume that you would like to buy two different products. Bread and Pepsi. And let's assume also that their prices are the same. 5 Egyptian pounds per loaf of bread and 5 Egyptian pounds per can of Pepsi. And you know that price of each one of them increases from 5 to 7. Do you think your responsiveness is going to be the same? According to law of demand, as price increase, quant demanded is going to decrease. But do you think it's going to decrease by the same amount in both uh, commodities? Of course not. This is elasticity. So elasticity means is the degree of the responsiveness of quantity demanded to change in price Or we can write it as, so this is price elasticity of demand. It's calculated as percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change in price. Percentage change in quantity demanded is calculated as a change in quantity demanded over the average quantity, while percentage change in price is calculated as change in price over average price. So we can write elasticity as a change in quantity over a change in price multiplied by the averages. Average price over average quantity. Or a change in quantity over a change in price multiplied by B2 plus B1 over Q2 plus Q1. And this is known as arc elasticity. Arc as it is between two different points. Do you think after the calculation of elasticity, what is the expected value? <coughs> First of all, it's going to be negative. But we are going to neglect the negative sign and take the absolute value. 
as the negative sign stands for the negative relationship between price and the quantity demanded. And the value ranges from zero to infinity. Cutting through one. If the value is zero, it's known as perfectly inelastic demand. And in this case, the demand curve will take the following shape. This is the demand curve. Whatever the change in price, quantity is constant. So in this case, percentage change in Q is zero divided by percentage change in price so it's zero divided by anything, it's zero. Example for uh, perfectly inelastic demand for a specific product is insulin. Diabetes are going to take the same quantity of insulin even even if price increase or decrease so this is the case of perfectly inelastic demand while if the value is greater than zero and less than one so it is here this is inelastic demand and the demand curve in this case will be steep demand curve There is a small change in quantity, while there is a huge change in price. This is the case of inelastic demand. And this is the case of necessary products such as breads. Your responsiveness, if price of bread increases, is going to be low, small number. You are going to decrease the quantity, but with a small percentage. What about if elasticity is one, one it is unit elastic demand. Unit elastic means that the percentage change in price is equivalent to percentage change in quantity demanded. And this is represented graphically by a 45 degree line. They are equivalent to each, to each other. If the value is greater than 1, this is elastic demand. And this is the shape of the demand curve. The percentage change in quantity is much greater than percentage change in price.
and this is the case of any luxury product say for example price of a chocolate increases so you can decrease the quantity sharply as it's not a necessity finally infinity it is perfectly elastic demand Almost there is no change in price while the quantity change. So this means that change in price is almost zero. This is the case of perfectly elastic demand. So once again, elasticity is going to be based on percentage change in QD divided by percentage change in price. If percentage change in QD is zero, while percentage change in price is any number, so the value will be zero, this is perfectly inelastic demand. If percentage change in quant demanded is lower than percentage change in price this is gonna be inelastic demand if they are equivalent to each other so this is the case of unit elastic demand if percentage change in quant demand is greater than percentage change in price this is elastic demand and finally if the percentage change in price is zero this is the case of perfectly elastic demand So if you calculate elasticity and you find it as negative 1.5, as we said, we are going to neglect the negative sign and take the absolute value. So the value is 1.5, which is greater than 1. So this is elastic demand. And if you calculate elasticity and it is negative 0.3, we are going to take the absolute value. So it is 0.3, which is less than 1. So this is inelastic demand. So if you know that, price increase from 2 to 4 and as a result quantity decreased from 10 to 8 what is the price elasticity of demand in this case so elasticity of demand is going to be calculated as Q2 minus Q1 divided by B2 minus B1 multiplied by B2 plus B1 over Q2 plus Q1. So it is 10 minus 8 divided by 2 minus 4 multiplied by 10 plus 8 divided by 2 plus 4. So it will be 3, which is take the absolute value which is greater than one so this is elastic demand so this is a case of arc elasticity arc means that you have two different prices and two different quantities but in some cases there are uh, instead of 
arc elasticity we would like to calculate it at a specific point of time or at a specific price in order to be more precise so this is known as point elasticity in case of point elasticity price elasticity of demand is calculated as change in quantity over a change in price multiplied by b over q this is the slope of the demand function returning back to demand function it's qd equals a minus pp this is So if you know that QD equals 100 minus 5P and if you would, we would like to calculate price elasticity of demand when price equals 4. So ED equals change in quantity over change in price with, which is 5. negative 5 multiplied by 4 and then we have to substitute in the equation in order to find equilibrium sorry in order to, to find the equivalent quantity so qd will be 100 minus 5 multiplied by 4 so it's 80 So elasticity negative 1.25 which is greater than 1 so it is elastic demand <coughs> what are the factors that affect the elasticity Number one, ease of substitutes. As long as you can find substitute for the product, so elasticity of this product is going to increase as you can shift your demand from this product to any other product or in another words, to shift the demand for the substitute. Number two, the proportion of income spent on the product. If the price of a box of matches increased by 50%, where its price is 2 Egyptian pounds, for example, and it increases from 2 to 3, actually the proportion of this uh, box of matches, uh, the, sorry, the proportion of the price of this box of matches related to your income is very minor. So it doesn't matter, you can buy it. 
But if the price of a car increases from 50 to 70 thousands, so in this case, there is a possibility that you cannot buy this product. Its share related to your income is very high. Okay, so the, if the, um, as long as the, the proportion of income spent on a commodity is high, elasticity of this product is going to be more. <coughs> Number three time. If you would like to buy a product right now and you know that the price of this product increases so immediately you haven't any choices you have to buy it but maybe after one day you can find substitute for this product you can find another way instead of using this product say for example you would like to travel anywhere and the ticket and um, and you know that the the price of a ticket increases from say 20 to 50 so you haven't any other option you have to pay the value of this ticket now but maybe tomorrow you can find any other uh, transportation method other than trains okay so the longer the time period the more elastic the demand <coughs> number four Durability. Durability or long lasting. If you are going to use a commodity for a longer time period, so the demand for this product will be more elastic And the last factor is adaption. Habit. If you have a certain habit, so the possibility to decrease the quantity is lower. Say, for example, I have to drink coffee daily. So this is an addiction. So if the price of coffee increases, even if I'm going to decrease it, decrease the quantity, but it's not going to be um, decreased by a huge amount. <coughs> so if it is a habit, so the demand will be inelastic. If you can get off, get get rid of this habit. So the demand would be more elastic. So what is the importance of elasticity to the producer? Elasticity will affect the decision of the producer whether to increase price or not, as this will affect total revenue <coughs> total 
total revenue is calculated as price multiplied by the quantity. So according to law of demand, when price increase, quantity will decrease. But what's going to happen to the total revenue? Price increase, quantity will decrease and vice versa. So total revenue is going to increase or decrease. Actually, this depends on elasticity. So here we have to differentiate between, between three different cases. If it is unit elastic, if it is elastic demand, and if it is inelastic demand. As we said, in case of elastic demand, as price increase by, say, for example, one percent, quantity demanded will increase by more than, sorry, will decrease by more than ten percent, one percent. Once again, if price increase by one percent, quantity demanded will decrease by any value more than one percent. So price increase 1%, quantity decrease by more than 1%. So total revenue in this case will decrease. Okay, let's take an example. This is a case of elastic demand. <clears throat> the initial situation is the price 100, uh, sorry, 10, and the quantity in this case is 100. So total revenue will be 1000. As price increases from 10 to 12, quantity demanded decreased from 100 to 60. As a result, total revenue will be 720. So in case of elastic demand, as price increases, and the quantity demanded decrease, total revenue will decrease. <coughs> what about the inelastic demand? As we said that inelastic demand, the quantity will decrease but with a small amount or with a minor, a minor percentage. So as price increase, by 1%, quantity demanded will decrease by less than 1%. So in this case, <coughs> total revenue will increase. Let's take an example. Taking the initial situation, the price is 10, quantity is 100, so total revenue will be 1,000. Also, price increases from 10 to 12, but in this case, as demand is inelastic, so quantity will decrease from 100 to 90. So total revenue will be 1080. So total revenue increase in this case. So in case of inelastic demand, as total revenue increase, 
sorry, as price increase, total revenue will increase. What about the case of unit elastic? In case of unit elastic, when price increase by 1%, quantity demanded will decrease by the same percentage, which is 1%. So in this case, total revenue will not change. <clears throat> so if I ask you to give a recommendation for the producer, whether to increase price or not, so you have to think about the elasticity, the price elasticity of demand. If the demand for this product is inelastic, so you can give a recommendation for policy make for, uh, for the producer to increase price. As in this case, total revenue for this producer is going to increase. But if demand is elastic, so it's not good for, for producers to increase price. It's better for them to decrease price in order to increase total revenue. So as we said, in case of demand, that there are other factors affect demand, other sorry affect the quant demanded other than price. Also with respect to elasticity, there are there are other types of elasticity other than price elasticity of demand. One of the main factors affect demand is income so we have to study income elasticity in case of income elasticity we would like to see the responsiveness Of quantity demanded to change in income. So it is the same definition as price elasticity of demand except change in income. Turning back to Is the degree of the responsiveness of quantity demanded to change in this is price elasticity to change in income this is income elasticity also it is calculated using almost the same rule except that we are going to change price with income so it is percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change in income. And it's going to be the same. A change in quantity over a change in income multiplied by average income over average quantity or we can write it as q2 minus q1 over income 2 minus income 1 multiplied by income 2 plus income 1 over q2 plus q1 <coughs> the value ranges from zero to infinity if it is zero so it is perfectly inelastic demand less than one it's inelastic demand one unit elastic demand greater than one elastic demand and if it is um, infinity it's perfectly inelastic demand but the sign will affect our decision the sign 
refers to the type of the commodity. As we said, in demand, that if income increase, we have to differentiate between two different types of commodities, whether it is normal or inferior. And we said, as income increase and the commodity is normal, so demand will increase. So if it is positive sign, this means that the commodity is normal. And if it is negative sign, this means that the commodity is inferior. <clears throat> so if you calculate income elasticity of demand and the value is negative 1.5 so the absolute value which is 1.5 means that the demand is elastic while the negative sign stands for the type of the commodity so this means that the demand is elastic and the commodity is inferior If we calculate elasticity of demand and it is positive 1.5, this means that the commodity is normal and the demand is elastic. <clears throat> if we calculate income elasticity of demand and it is negative 0.3, so the negative sign means that the commodity is inferior and the absolute value is less than 1 which means that the demand is inelastic. If we calculate elasticity and it's 1, this means that the commodity is normal as it is positive, and the elasticity is unit elastic. So once again, the sign stands for the type of the commodity, whether it is positive or uh, well, sorry, whether it is norm, uh, normal or inferior, while the absolute value stands for whether the demand is elastic or inelastic or unit elastic or perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. There is one more type for elasticity which is cross elasticity. As we said, in case of factors affect the demand, that there is one of the main factors that affect demand, which is price of related goods. So this is related to price of related goods. This is cross elasticity. Cross elasticity is the degree of the responsiveness of quantity demanded of commodity X to change in price of commodity Y. Or we can write it as percentage change in quantity demanded of X divided by percentage change in price of Y. <clears throat> as we said that price of related goods is related to Complements and substitutes. So we would like to study the demand for product X and the price of product Y. In case of complements such as 
tea and sugar. So if price of tea increases, what's going to happen to the quantity of sugar? Price of tea, quantity of sugar. Okay. In case of substitutes, tea and coffee. If price of tea increases, what's going to happen to the quantity of coffee? Tea and coffee. Okay. So we study the relationship between price of a specific commodity and the quantity of another commodity. The value ranges from zero to infinity. Zero perfectly inelastic, less than, uh, less than one uh, inelastic, one unit elastic, greater than one elastic, infinity perfectly elastic. The sign determines the type of the commodity, whether it is complement or substitutes. <clears throat> As we said, when price of tea increases, demand for sugar is going to increase or decrease. Tea and sugar are complements. So, as price of tea increases, people are not going to demand tea, and as a result, they are not going to demand uh, sugar. So, demand for sugar is going to decrease, so it's a negative relationship. So, if the cross elasticity is negative, this means that the products are complements. While in case of substitutes, as price of tea increases, People are not going to demand tea and they are going to demand coffee. So demand for coffee is going to increase. So it is a positive relationship. So if it's positive, this means that the products are substitutes. <clears throat> so to sum up, Today we talked about three different types of elasticities, price elasticity, income elasticity, and the cross elasticity. Almost the rule is the same. Only one change. This is percentage change in QD over percentage change in price. Percentage change in QD over percentage change in income, percentage change in QD of X over percentage change in price of Y. Okay, all of them give the same range of results zero, from zero to infinity. The absolute value identify whether the product is elastic or inelastic or perfectly elastic, etc. <coughs> it's always negative in this case, stands for the negative relationship between price and the quantity demanded. Here it can be positive or negative based on the type of the commodity, whether it is normal or inferior. Here it can be positive or negative based on the type of the commodity, whether they are complements or substitutes. They are calculated, in case of arc elasticity, they are calculated as Q2 minus Q1 divided by B2 minus B1 multiplied by B2 plus B1 over Q2 plus Q1. Here it is the same. Q2 minus Q1 over I2 minus I1 multiplied by I2 plus I1 Q2 plus Q1, and here, Qx2 minus Qx1 divided by By2 minus By1 multiplied by By2 plus By1 over Qx2 plus Qx1. <coughs> and then, we talked about point elasticity just in case of price elasticity of demand. And finally, we talked about the relationship between uh, price elasticity and total revenue. This is the end of our lecture today. Thank you and see you next week.